the alternative dig talk real issues real talk beautiful Ugandans, it's your girl to defend you. Welcome to the fancy floor. Who doesn't see my hair, guys? I am super glamorous. Remember, this is the only show where we're going to be talking about fashion. Please, where are your things? Ah, teaching. What has been confusing you about fashion? information about fashion, maintenance of body shape. I can wear bling bling when I'm going out. So you can wear bling bling going out or any occasion. We shall be doing all this in the fancy floor. Remember, it airs every Thursday right from 8.30 to 9 with your girl Teddy Tenjo. It is the fancy floor. Hey Ugandans, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Dewa Kiki, the Deputy Defense Spokesperson, and actually the Deputy Spokesperson for the Uganda People's Defense Forces. I was hosted on Alternative Dig Talk. I encourage all Ugandans that this is the way to go. Always watch, participate, give your views, and ask questions on Alternative Dig Talk. Dig Talk, the way to go. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. A very good evening, our viewers, and we welcome you to tonight's uh, uh, episode of uh, the Hotline Show that runs every Monday. My name is Abdal Latif, and uh, here I am again to discuss the role of women in advancing rule of law and justice within our country, Uganda. We all know that uh, we have seen a number of uh, prominent women rising through the ranks uh, to serve this country in different capacities. But the question remains, have they done enough to ensure that there is rule of law in the country, Uganda, there is justice in this country, and then, if not, what else can we do more to ensure that there is justice, there is rule of law, there is democracy, there is good governance? Like, the whole question of leadership and governance gets addressed in this country. Well, in the studios, like we communicated earlier, I have two strong women, women of valor. Uh, that is, I uh, have uh, honorable, uh, does the title honorable apply? I... Yes, woman of valor, she automatically qualifies to. <laughs> well, I have uh, Honorable Rina Zadriga Waru Abuku. Uh, when you mention her name, for those who have been within the civil society world, they have, you must be very, very much aware of that name and the commitment and a lot of work she has done to ensure that uh, women in this country rise through the ranks to become persons who can also make a very great contribution to this country, Uganda. Uh, Honorable Rina is with us tonight. And then uh, I also have another strong woman uh, who has been through the politics of this country, and that is uh, Honorable Winnie Chiza. She has, she's, the, she's a former leader of opposition, and we all know what she did. Uh, if you remember during the times of the Kasese killings, she was among the people who were in the talks to ensure that uh, there is justice in that area and maybe as we proceed with the discussion she will be able to tell us how far did they go with such discussions now i want to invite my guests i want to start with our honorable lina to say hi to our viewers thank you so much for 
hosting us and moderating us. I'm so excited, <laughs> you know, to link up <laughs> with <laughs> Honorable, the Right Honorable Winnie Kiza, the lady who has inspired, who actually propelled some of us from civil society to like jump <laughs> into politics. I'm on that. Thank you very, very, very much. And good evening. <laughs> And good morning, viewers, because many of, us, of you are following us from different, from different time zones. Yeah. And, of course, those enabling us to be, to be accessed, the technical team, uh, maximum respect for you all. Thank you Very so much. Very excited to be here today. Thank you so much, Honorable <laughs> Lina. Uh, then I want to cross over to the right Honorable uh, Winnie Chiza. You could also, please, you should also say hi to the viewers. Our viewers from whichever time zone you are in, I want to greet you. I want to say thank you to the Dig Talk team for enabling us to be here with my dear sister and friend, Dr. Lina Zedriga. I want to thank the Dig Talk staff and the viewers for ensuring that this happens, that we are here to discuss issues that are so close to our hearts as women, that are so close to the development of our country, the development of the world, the development of our regions. Because without women, there is no development that can happen. Well, Because they are actually the beginning and the end of creation. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Um, and for our viewers, uh, Honorable Lina Zedriga, she is a national leader. She is a uh, national vice president from the National Unity Platform. And then uh, the Right Honorable Winnie Chisa, she's also a national leader in the Alliance for National Transformation. And we really thank you for honoring our invitation and creating, really, creating time to be part of tonight's uh, discussion. Well, our discussion is going to rotate around the role of women in uh, advancing, in ensuring that uh, there is a rule of law in this country, that the question of leadership and governance is fully answered. Uh, many people believe that uh, when you discuss human rights in this country, when you discuss the rule of law, when you discuss democracy, these are questions where you find it that uh, Uganda, we are not doing well. Uh, a few weeks back, actually not even a few weeks, if just a few days, the, the Vice President, Honorable Jessica Lupo, represented Uganda uh, when they are doing the, the human rights review. Uh, and the, the, the findings really, the outcomes show that uh, Uganda is not doing so much well, meaning that uh, something extra has to be done. I want to start with uh, the Right Honorable Winnie Chiza. You've been in this game for quite a while. And uh, at the time where, at a critical time, where everyone thought that you will still come up and add your voice to the parliament, uh, many people think that uh, maybe you chose to cowardize, I don't know. <laughs> that maybe you tested your waters and like they are too deep for you for this time. And quite a number of people were disappointed, like, no, we, we needed the right honorable women, she's a back in parliament. Maybe you could take us through what happened and what propelled you not to stand. Thank you so much, moderator. I think for me, when people air out how they feel about certain situations, I feel energized. Like those who think maybe we need chickened out, maybe we tested the waters and felt they were so hot that she couldn't go on, they are also just fighting away. Mm -hmm. But as for me, it was an issue of uh, keeping a promise okay. that I had made to my people as I was contesting in 2016. Actually, before even nomination, as I was doing my as I was doing my consultations before even the nomination, there are some elders I told that after this term, I'm going to rest. Okay. And it was also another commitment and promise I had made to myself as a woman that I need to mentor other young leaders. You needed to create space. I for needed people. to create space for other leaders to be on board. You know, wow. when we talk about good governance, good governance has an aspect of transparency, an aspect of accountability, yeah. knowing that you are answerable to a section of the population that you lead. Yeah. And as women, the reason why many people have not uh, offered us leadership 
They think we don't know how to lead. <laughs> they think we are supposed to still be behind there in the kitchen. Mm. But all these are stereotypes of the society that we are in. A society that believes that it's only men who can manage tasks, and most especially tasks that are of a bigger nature. So to me, getting out of parliament, I knew I had all the chances for the people of Kasese to vote for me. That is why majority of them say they were disappointed. But you had a promise. They wouldn't have gotten disappointed if they were sure they were not going to vote for me. Yeah. They would have said good readers. But I had to keep a promise that I had made. Secondly, I had to keep my promise as a woman that another woman should take, over. Should take up responsibility so, so that together we can shape the agenda of this country. Together we can advocate for fairness, we advocate for justice, we continue advocating for the rule of law when we are many. Holding on to the space and becoming the only one to talk about the these issues. Omega. Yes, it, 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 it also bores people and sometimes you become few who are enlightened and who can speak about issues. So the more we are, the better for us to talk about our issues. So my dear, it wow. was an issue that I've been encouraging our leaders like President Museveni. To emulate. To emulate. I just wanted to set an example <laughs> to those leaders who have super glued on the space mm. that you don't count yourself successful if you don't look back and say, I have groomed this one. I have mentored this one. Success in leadership is not about you occupying the office for a long time. But it's about seeing other people. The footsteps you mean. Yes, footsteps seeing you other mean. people being held by you. And you look back, you see so many coming out of your hands, coming through your mentorship. And so we are about to tell him seven that I think you have failed in leadership because you are not mentoring other people who should take up leadership from you. So I didn't want to be a person who says other people should leave the stage when it is still early. And for me, I don't leave this thing. And you do the opposite. So I, I wanted to be a leader who walks the talk. Wow. Thank you so much, Right Honorable. I think that was a very good elaboration. And uh, many people who had that question in mind, it has been uh, fully answered. I think that's a very rare species of uh, a human being in this country. It's really very, very rare to find the, the only person who did that now it was Honorable Chanjo, who said I will mm. serve for only two terms. After two terms, he went and of course if other people but uh, I, I don't think there are so many leaders of that kind yeah well now this takes us to the whole question of uh, affirmative action i want to take this to honorable zedriga mm -hmm. you've been so <laughs> influential you've nurtured so many people within the civil society especially the women uh, for what they uh, for what they Fida. Fida. You know, you've been Akford. there. Akford, you've been there. <laughs> and just mentioning the name, the Driga, it, it, it's a house, a household brand name. Really? Now, yes. and now, one would say that uh, where the Driga was, that was enough to serve this country. Okay. Because so many people have been, they've gone, through, actually we know some of the trainings, uh, uh, for what they have been conducting to nurture young politicians, especially young women, mm -hmm. to nurture them how to become very good leaders. Mm -hmm. And now once would say, why did she live here where we, where she could serve us and we could see those visible results and then cross over to the politics where... Uh, and the where politics, they that politics results are not visible. And <laughs> sometimes they, are, sometimes they, they go for explanations. Okay. Yes, what prepared okay. you to do that? Yeah, thank you so much, moderator. And I bring you greetings from uh, the women of Uganda who are seeing the women's movement and leadership in the different political spaces, and they are very concerned. Yeah. Especially now, at a time. In fact, when I, uh, when, when I got the invitation, women, our role in the rule of law, democracy, good governance, I struggled. I said, how will I start to yeah. pitch myself? Because what I saw, what I've experienced being abducted and, and, and by men and imprisoned with men, and then, you know, they want to bribe this one, they want to bribe Lina, they are offering, I'm telling you. Then I'm like, do I really still have anything to offer? 
to this world. But that notwithstanding, people like her inspire us. Mm -hmm. And uh, for me, why I went and crossed, and I've made many crosses, by the way, <laughs> 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 and also to agree with her mm. issues of principle I'm a, show, a, a social justice activist in principle I hold a PhD in transitional justice and especially the gap between law and justice mm. and the critical role of women that is my thesis that was my thesis I've been just about women's participation then we saw the gap when women are up, you are asking the question, why cross? Okay, we mentored, we trained, and the people, many, many women, the Nites and so on, they came for the... the, 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 the they came so many. They went through your Went hand. through my very hand, you see here. <laughs> <laughs> mentored these women. <laughs> yes. Isn't that the way? So that's when I'm the Bible... I'm one, I'm one of them oh. that you mentored. Wow. Yes, yes, you see? My mentor. She mentored you, but yes. again, you yes. inspired her. Through for yes. one day. By the way, for those day. training, this, and what? Thank the women's movement in Uganda, Forum for Women Democracy, FIDA, Ooh, Uganda Women's Network, Net uh, Women for Democracy Network, P the Perrier Tours, you, for Ackford, with the National Association you of Women, women. Yes, Judges. Women yes, yes. Where haven't we been? Hmm? So, why did we cross? Many experiences, but I will stick to two. The first one is uh, the whole issue of affirmative action. Mm. I do not believe in Article 33, uh, 32 being 32. implemented. You know, it's about the affirmative action, and then you mentor, but it is not being monitored. It's, it has been totally misused, mm. patronized, and the people as sponsoring. So for me, like you, your principal, I stood on 2016, that time Democratic Party, and go forward, and I, I ran on, on, on the main direct against the minister, Dr. Ajedra Aridru, Aridru. in Evora. Mm. And when I believed very strongly I was rigged out, I did not go to court because I knew there were other things I could be, I could be doing. And then 2021, 20, I chose to embrace the opportunity to inspire more women yeah. to run at all levels. Mm -hmm. And they did. We saw women running for local council, three chairpersons, one chairperson. Those did not just come anyhow. So I felt we needed to, my remaining years, I need to make sure I'll be able to point. You know, she was the one I inspired and so on. And that's why, by choice, I did not contest. Mm. And I will not contest on an affirmative seat. I will not. <laughs> I will never let that person run and oppose and please... Take it from me and quote me, I will not, by on a matter of principle, okay? That's why when in Ivora, uh, in fact, the other time she was even, a, uh, that she's scoring zero, she's, a, you know, it's a shame and so on, but that's not for me to do. Mine is to inspire very, very, very many people. I did not want to be selfish. I'm running in Ivora knowing very well they were going to rig me out and I would be heartbroken. I went all over northern Uganda and inspired. By the way, I'm so happy. I am so happy because now people are so aware. Yeah. We may now have a voice. That was a platform unprecedented. So that for me was the reason that we need to challenge the status quo. We need to ensure that we are all over. Okay? Yeah. Yes, and then we have always been, you know, we need to be in, in the political party positions. Yeah? So when the opportunity came to be the vice president of this vibrant young man, intelligent, loved, and fearless, <laughs> I said, who am I? Isn't, so, isn't this that position, for me... Isn't that position like the, the vice president of this country? Absolutely, it's not. Because it's, we have known It's so that, different. We have known that position for being, if you look at it, the people who have gone through... Professor Kenya, uh, Professor uh, Speciosa Wandera Kaziwe, second, you know. Just first of all, even see the way thing. I am seated, the way I am talking, the way <laughs> from the time I was unveiled. <laughs> uh, I committed. I said, I have said I do. Not overnight. I also put he, the party to t that time the People's Power me Movement to investigate me and do due diligence as I prayed. It wasn't overnight, one, two. 
have been given, you know, this one, this, the ones you are quoting, have been given a very short so string, <laughs> so they can't even hang themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I've been given a Full blank check. Wow. A real blank check. And that's why even we have two women vice presidents, by the way, one for Western, Jolly, a Jolly, very yes, brilliant Jolly, night Jolly, woman. Come, come. Yeah, jo uh, uh, Jolly Mujisha. Mujisha yeah, you know? Yeah. So he has balanced it and has given us that space really to ensure that the women's participation is meaningful. Well, thank you so much, yeah. uh, Honorable Lina Zedriga. I, I think... Uh, that is a score to the women in this country, especially yeah. those uh, who want to see that uh, women really take up uh, such vibrant positions. Uh, I, I think when we, when we talk about the question of uh, affirmative action, maybe we need to make our viewers fully understand this. Uh, there are some positions that have been um, ring-fenced for specific individuals that uh, since the, this country went into election, these are the same persons who have been seen time and again and one, I remember there is, a, uh, there is a, an audio I listened to, I think it was uh, made by Honorable Hussein Chanjo. He said that uh, affirmative action has to be changed the way it's practiced here. That uh, it should at least have a time frame. One cannot be elected on affirmative action time and again. <laughs> its role is to, you know, to, 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 to give an opportunity to the women to come. So when you go through that, you're already empowered. Leave way and other people come. Uh, this is similar to what you did, uh, right, Honorable. But now with the some people who have really failed to understand, how best can we have affirmative action, functional and uh, uh, well embracing everyone here? I think like Dr. Zedriga did mention, we need to do an audit yeah. of the affirmative action, yeah. most especially in the <laughs> leadership circles. Yeah. And we see, are we making progress or not? Are we really thinking that the women should just go on on affirmative action until, until? Or we should say possibly a woman can stand under the affirmative action ticket for this period. Yeah. We feel that you have been empowered. Then you can take on another venture. Yeah. I think to us as women, we should begin this conversation amongst ourselves and ask what is it that we want. And have we really benefited to that extent yes. that we have changed the thing? We really need to do an audit. We, we need to do an audit. But I've also seen that now uh, the structure is a little bit changing mm -hmm. to the extent that when a woman is getting to the point where we think that the woman is empowered, the powers that be will fight that woman Absolutely. Okay. and bring yes. the woman back. Yes. Oh. And so you realize that the women, at all times we are training. Mm. At all times there are new women coming on board. Mm. We are training. Very few of them, by the way, have stayed for a long time. Mm -hmm. Very few of them. Mm. But we also need to start a conversation among us ourselves and say, at what stage should, should the woman one? leave space for other women? Yeah to also have a feel of leadership so that together we can have a critical mass of informed women, women who have been at the center of influence, women who have been at the center of, of serious decision making, so that if we sit in this table, mm. myself and Zedriga are talking about the same language. Mm. Mm. Sometimes it defeats us that when we are into the spaces where women are, mm. Even those who seem to be in some spaces are now listening to one person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the empowerment levels are not the same. Mm -hmm. So this discussion must begin. Mm -hmm. I remember during the Citizens Compact on Free and Fair yes. Elections, yeah. yes. members of the civil society did yeah. mute that yeah. as an issue for us to begin conversing mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. That I think the women, you should also begin thinking about uh, transforming your leadership styles and skills that you have acquired over time yes. into another space to increase the number of women. You know there is a time when uh, women mm. who are representing constituencies, we are also becoming many. Mm. But of course, the society we are in is a society that believes in men much more than women. And so many of the women who contest with men are branded differently. They are given names. Those are the impossible. The iron ladies, the, this, and the, the, the shameless You're women. Contesting on the, men's you are contesting on men's positions <laughs> as if you don't know the position for women. It's like this position has now put a woman 
into a particular bracket. Yeah. What we also need to begin advocating for is now the gender parity mm. in terms of political leadership, the 50-50 mm. representation. Mm. So that when the women, just like it is in Rwanda, mm. when the women go into these other positions where the men are supposed to be, then we can know that more women will be brought on board than men. But people th don't even want to look at your capabilities. They mm. don't want to look at the, the brain time. that you have because of the stereotypes that they have about women. A person like Zedriga, for example, people will say, now, why is she coming on the ticket of men? Yeah. Why couldn't she go and contest <laughs> with her fellow women? Yeah. But her issue is, my role is to empower other women. And yes. if I'm empowering other women, I yes, don't have to go and... I, yes, I want to challenge the status quo, and mm. therefore I don't have to go and mm. squeeze the space yeah. where the women are. Absolutely. If anything, I better create mm. more opportunities for women's visibility mm. using another channel. Okay. And I just want to ask whoever is listening to me, when you are voting, most especially when women show up in these spaces that have been construed to be for men, look at the type of woman who has come up. Mm. Don't look at the gender, but look at the capability. Because mm. many of these women who show up to contest with men, they are really women of capacity and capability. Mm. And because of the stereo, cultural stereotypes, we lose out on good leaders. Yeah. So the issue of <coughs> affirmative action is an issue that we should revise, do an audit, take a stock of the women who have gone through affirmative action and we see as the women, are we achieving or not? Well, I, can I can say that really we are achieving as women because they are in positions of influence yeah. and like you said, what are women doing to fight for good governance and justice? Yeah. They are in these spaces. And mm. we have used the spaces to advocate for good governance. We have used the spaces in councils, in <coughs> civil society, <coughs> in parliament, mm. to advocate for justice. You just talked about the, the, the struggle that I carried out as a member of parliament for Kasese, yeah. to fight for the justice of the people who were butchered by Museven in Kasese. Mm. These are the spaces that we use as leaders. Uh, so Honorable, women have tried. Honorable, yeah, you, you were lead of opposition. Yes. This is a highly ranked position. Absolutely. In this country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, in most cases, when you're leaving office, there is, that, there is always a fallback position. And uh, when you hand over power to someone coming after you, is there anything that you think that you believe you fail to do it and uh, the people who came in after you have been able to do it or what has, what has not been done? One thing that for me stands out is that when I get into an office, I know that I am adding a block to the already made blocks. And I know that those who came after me also came to add a block. Mm. I am lucky that for me, I handed over power willingly and happily to my sister, the Honorable Betty Award. Mm. I became leader of the opposition in 2016. And that appointment made me, by the way, the first female leader of opposition <laughs> yeah. in this country yeah. since independence. Yeah. So my sister Betty becomes, Historic. yes, this, my sister Betty becomes the, the second, second woman leader of the opposition mm. since independence. During my tenure, there is a lot that we did. First of all, demystifying the fact that opposition is just a bag of opposers. <laughs> I, I was able to demystify that. And people saw that really there is a need to have a vibrant opposition during that time. And I, I, I want to say that we tried that though through thick and thin. Fighting in a space of a dictator is not an easy task. There will always be hard times and good times. But I had a team mm. that was vibrant, a team that was willing to work the staff and the members of parliament whom I had on the opposition at that side. And I'm sure it is this team that we built that my sister inherited and she started from there the journey. 
the team that is there right now. I know th there are other many things that I was <coughs> not able to do because of the situations that we are in. I thought by the time I left office, maybe my case that I took to the ICC would have been answered. I Good. took it there as the member of parliament for Kasese district. Mm -hmm. But I can say I was also using the office of the leader of the opposition as an opposition leader to keep my country in check because that was uh, that is the main o o objective of the office of the leader of the opposition to keep government in check and part of keeping my government in check was to hold it accountable for the excesses and injustice mm -hmm. and the mismanagement of mm -hmm. governance systems ensuring that the security becomes high-handed on, on the side of the citizens. Well, I can say that possibly that is one thing that I left uncompleted, and those who followed me didn't complete it up as well. well. My people are still in jail, and I still want to pray that the leadership of the opposition continues to hold the government accountable, and I am happy that they yeah, walked out that. of parliament and said, <laughs> we can't continue debating as if the situation is normal. Is that only reason we are, for the... We are, in, yes, we are in abnormal situation. It is not a preserve of the opposition, okay. but their main objective, if you look at the law, Article <coughs> 82 <coughs> of the Constitution, 82A of the Constitution, mm -hmm. and the administration of the Parliament's Act, 6, 6E, the main objective and the main preoccupation of the opposition is to keep government in check. Mm -hmm. So how do you keep government in check? You keep government in check over its excesses, you keep government in check over its abuses, you keep government in check over misuse of finances, you keep government in check over the abuse of the law. Mm -hmm. So if there is an injustice committed on Ugandans, Ugandans are being tortured, the Kakwenzas of this world, the Maserekas of this world, the M members of parliament who are in jail over trumped up charges, the royal guards who are still incarcerated in different prisons of this world and nobody is talking about it. I think they did a great job. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, uh, right, Honorable. And uh, I want to straight away go to Honorable uh, Lina Zabriga. Uh, we've seen uh, many women make attempts to vie for the biggest seat in this country, which is really a great step ahead. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, these women who we, the other time we had Maureen Charlia, uh, this time we had uh, Nancy Kalembe. You are forgetting we had, uh, and Betty We had Miri Obote, we had Betty Kamea. Kamea. Hey. Uh, you know, <laughs> so th they've really made it like, no, even we, the women, we are capable, we can do it. Unfortunately, they have not been well supported, even by the fellow women in this country. Even the previous election, the, the, the very recent one, what the lady and, and her performance was not that much as one would expect, given the kind of advocacy you've been doing to, to, to see these women rise up to the ladders. What is happening? Article 32. Affirmative action for favor in favor of marginalized groups. I want to read what is happening. Mm. Article 32 1 says, notwithstanding anything in this constitution, the state shall take affirmative action because there's a confession the state is making. <laughs> Why? It mm. answers that question. Mm. In, favor. in favor of groups of marginalized. marginalized on the basis of gender, of mm -hmm. gender, age, disability or any other reason created by history, tradition, tradition or, or customs, customs for the purpose of redressing imbalances which exist against them. I love number two. Laws, cultures, mm. customs and traditions which are against the dignity, welfare or interest of women or any other marginal. So this is a constructed thing mentally. And do you know it is with the women who are the custodians who keep it that way? They say that don't rock the boat. Since when? Because we are constructed from birth. Oh, it, this is a girl? Ah. She will be carried like this. The umbilical cord will be... But, 
<laughs> will be buried on the other side. And it is all that construction is for home domesticity. Yeah? So you are constructed from birth just for that role. You don't speak very loud because you are rocking the boat and that is actually punishable. There's a, a video, a man was disciplining his girlfriend or his... Yeah. In fact, if you are not strong, you can't. Because yeah. they say the man must beat the woman. In fact, at a certain training in, 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 in TESO about women in yeah. leadership, yeah. the women said, but for us, madam, you, you people, don't spoil our, 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 our tradition. Don't dilute our culture. Eh? You know, if a man doesn't beat you, he doesn't, doesn't, love, doesn't you. love you. Because <laughs> now, what, how, for example, if we were going to the well, we are socializing her. Mm -hmm. eh? Madam, how are you? I'm fine. Has the man beaten you? No. Ah! He doesn't love you. Make me. sure he beats you. This is socialization. <laughs> Make sure, because if he doesn't beat you, he, he do does it. not love you. So what? He know what do you do? And then I'll say you go and make sure you pour the water down. So he must beat you today. <laughs> I was shocked. This is the socialization. This is the mentality. But our generation, of course, now cannot tolerate that. But we know in the rural play areas, this is still persisting. One. The other is about what a woman, a real woman, should be. You, let us define what a real woman, you will be shocked how other women will even define her. Submissive, with so many children, and that is it. But not at that level of presidency. When women are running for the direct seats, they, in fact, even the media, how they portray us. Mm -hmm. 2016, me, Miriam Atembe, Honorable, I have a lot of respect for We were a handful of women who were running on direct seats. I do not mean to be obscene, but the headlines, ready paper, women with the balls. Mm. I do not, I'm telling you, Google it. So that is the perception. So which woman now, if you are not bold like me and her, would want to be put in, in, in a society that you have balls? Sincerely. Derogatory identity of women who break the glass ceiling. By media, by the way. Okay, then they will get. So we have so many hurdles as women. The mentally idea of that ideal woman, and it is constructed historically. So we must deconstruct it historically. And how are you for doing that? that? The way I've socialized my daughter is not how I was socialized in practice. <clears throat> and the way she's socializing her children yeah. is not. So we are deconstructing that in practice. Okay. And I believe, I want to assure you, the future of the presidency of is a woman. And is, because when you even look at the achievements of women during the COVID response, Google, yeah. the, 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 the countries that were, uh, 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 the presidents are uh, women, responded better. Responded better. <coughs> so there's a lot of evidence. So for me, the answer is, it will take time, but it is happening. Uh, are you trying to, being a senior leader in the National Unity Platform, mm -hmm. do you have some mentorship sessions for the young girls to nurture them and prepare them? It, because we need to see more Zedrigas. We, not want, we don't want to have only one Zedriga. We don't want to see only one Winnie Chisa. We need many. So, do you have such programs in the National Unity Plan? We didn't even need to have the programs. The programs, <coughs> the programs had us. You know why? Do a scan of the leadership and the offices the women in Inup ran for. You will be amazed. You will be amazed. Try to do that. The LC1 here, your chairperson here, where you are, is a woman. Would that have happened? And a young woman, for that but, matter. But, but, but LC, Around, wait, person, wait, like, would that employee. have happened? So, I am saying, one, it is already no, on no, the I, run. I think, I think we need to guide the, the discussion. Because yeah. uh, LOC, when elections were held in 2018, and National Unity Platform was not there. Please, there is a chairperson. Who of, crossed over? No. Yeah, I think she crossed over. Yeah, because she crossed she's over. LC one. She's LC1. She crossed her absolutely. She's a woman. Even of Kabbalah Gala, she's a woman. Chairman, chairperson, chairperson. 
What I was em emphasizing is positions traditionally we would not even think young women would run for and be elected. It has happened. Okay. So the, there's history in the making. One, two. Yes, absolutely. We wouldn't want to lose. We are not only training, but also documenting their reality, wow. realities and celebrating. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Well, thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Lina Zodriga. Uh, I think when we talk about women of valor, then you're really able to, to see that uh, these are the kind of women this country needs, and we need to see more of them trying to you know, take up a leadership position. Maybe you never know Uganda will be a different country from what it is today. Uh, each of us has aspirations. We all want to see a better country. We all want to see a country that works for everyone. And this has remained a dream for all of us. But when we have such brains in this country, definitely there is some light in the future. And we believe at one point everything will be well. Now, I want to go back to the right honorable. You, you talked about uh, the, the mediations, the negotiations you had for, during the Kasese killings. And um, all of a sudden things, actually it's one of the, the things that you, you regret maybe, for having not been able to, you know, to, to, to drive it to, towards the end. And uh, could you give us some updates about that, that, that whole issue and what is the latest now? I think as I was even making the statement, I said, until now, people are still in prisons. Mm. The king himself is still held under house arrest. Yeah. The people don't know what is happening. They don't know what next. Because the judiciary has also decided to keep quiet. <coughs> the government has decided to keep quiet. We don't know whether our people are guilty or whether they are innocent. Because there has never been any hearing anyway in the matter for the last five years. They appeared once in the jail, I think. They only appeared once before a magistrate's court yeah. and we were trying to see if they can be granted bail, which bail was denied. Yeah. Mm. Every time they have appeared, there is a handful of them who were uh, released towards elections, a week towards elections. A few of them were released at night, taken at night told to enter their homes and remain there quietly without speaking to anyone. But they are still victims of the same torture. They have no psychosocial support has yeah. been given to them. People after being incarcerated for four years, separated from their families, their children, could not access education. Some of the men found their wives had left. Some of the wives found their husbands had taken mm. on other wives. Oh. So all this situation for us, we just think it was injustice of untold magnitude meted upon our people to break the moral fiber, yeah. to break the resilience of our people, mm. to force them into accepting the leadership of President M7. And, and I, think, I think to him he scored because I think we saw people now kind of retreating and voting for the NRM by force. We had a district that had uh, six MPs who were mm. all for mm. the opposition mm. forum for democratic change. Now he has three and the FDC has three. I think he kind of managed to push them into compliance. But if you went back to their hearts, they are bleeding. Are there some more efforts that are being put in place to ensure that uh the whole situation is restored and people get, get released. Of or... course, there are a lot of efforts that are happening behind the scenes. There is a group of elders who are talking about the matter. But you know, we are dealing with the Tibhavurwa. <laughs> <laughs> so all the, whatever will come out, we are still waiting. But like I said, it is an issue that hurts me. It's an issue that eats me up. And I really would like to see this issue coming to an end. And I would want to appeal to the government to now engage in two aspects of rule of law, the transitional justice mechanisms that she talked about, to be highlighted and we start talking about mm. healing the minds and the souls of the people. Uganda is bleeding. Moving from the north to the south, from the west to the east, you find people with and healed wounds mm. whose relatives have been subject of
torture, whose relatives have been subjects of the violence that we are expecting mm. in this country. And I can tell you that women have been at the forefront of all this. People like the Honorable Betty Vigombe, they went into the jungles of the northern Uganda and Garamba to go and speak to, to Koy, trying to see whether we can have justice for purposes of good governance to thrive. People like uh, the, the Miriam Matembe's, when uh, Zedriga talked about it, mm. People like Honorable Beatrice Anyuar, when she challenged the state on the giveaway of Mavira. Mavira Forest, yes. People like the Betty Kamiyas, who used to give us now the statistics of abuse of office in this country. Women have advocated for justice and good governance. Have tried to be change agents wherever they are to ensure that justice prevails. And we are all there, the Zedrigas of this world. For Zedriga to move from the civil society uh -huh. to come up to the open of politics, yes. she, knows, she knows that she has limitations in the, in, the, in the civil society. Yes. Her limitations were only that she will tell women, this is how you should behave, this is how you sh How they will do it, she's not there. Yeah. But now she had to come out into the open and say, let me go on the front line and, yes. and put what I've been imparting into others into practice. So I can sufficiently say we have tried, but the constructions that we grow up with in our different localities and villages, in our different tribes, yeah. regarding who a true woman should look like, exactly. they affect the performance of women. Mm. You talked about uh, our sisters who have so far put their feet into the office of the office of the president. Yeah. You know very well that this campaign requires a lot of resources. Money. Which resources is not at the disposal of women? Men of the women who want to try leadership positions will tell you they sweat looking for money. And those who came before us, the men who are leading this country, have commercialized the politics yeah. to the extent that everybody who sees someone running for a political office, they just look at money. When someone wants to say, I'm coming to run, people will not even want to look at your ideas. No. They will want to look at the money that you are bringing. And because of this, many women fear to even start. Those who come in, they will come in late when their fellow women have already taken sides. Mm even with their good ideas, because they fear starting early, knowing that when they start early, people will start asking for money from them. Early. Because <laughs> that, is, that is now what has been of the politics of this country. Mm. People will start saying now that you are running honorable to work mm. yeah. You are excellent. Now they start, calling you for, they start calling you for fundraising. Yeah. Because mm. that is the, the standard that the leadership mm. has created. Mm. Wow. You will see President M7 <laughs> going even to these funerals and they will say Mr. M7 has donated this 10 million. Mr. M7 <coughs> is doing this. It is to be now the presidency. So for us, the women, we know that really we are playing a big role and we want to thank those, most especially who fought before us for the recognition of women, ensuring that specific spaces are created for women to show their leadership prowess and to participate in these high level talks well, that like we are engaging in now. Otherwise, before that, the gender stereotypes were still holding the women back yeah. and mm. they are those who are still construed and into these constructions and are laid back, they can't move. Others still fear to be branded, others still fear to offend their fathers and to offend their husbands and therefore they cannot come into the open mm -hmm. even when they have had positions of influence. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, the Right Honorable. And there are so many uh, comments coming through and maybe later on we'll be reading through. And then I want to thank the uh, Noob spokesperson is watching. Wow. And, uh, 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 <laughs> Hello. Ambassador Grace Sempala is also watching. Wow. And, uh, so many people here. So <laughs> we really thank you for being part of the discussion. Yeah. Now, um, just on the same point, where we have uh, many political prisoners in this country, mm -hmm. just last week, uh, Dr. Bed Buanika Honorable came up with a proposal that maybe it is time for National Unity Platform, which is the leading opposition party in the country, to start negotiations, you know, a dialogue with government. 
Uh, and he says it was done before, and a number of them got released. He didn't say with the government, he said with seven. Oh, with seven. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the correction. That, those yes. are two different actors. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, that you, you should at least engage in a discussion with them, and uh -huh. at least uh, save the lives being uh, incarcerated. And uh, this is a proposal that didn't uh, attract the attention of uh, the leadership of the National Unity Platform. Uh, according to, it was bashed, that's what I should say. Uh, what alternative plans do you have to ensure that these young people in jail get out of it? Actually, for us, it is not the alternative. It is the main plan. You know, the, indi the independence of these, the scores of our supporters, of Ugandans innocently incarcerated, tortured, brutalized in the most inhuman way possible in this world, held and tried in military court marshals here in, 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 in Machi India. Yeah? It, very innocent people. Their crime is because they support National Unity Platform Party. They also support change yeah people came out they said enough is enough my generation some of us betrayed the cause but their generation and with some of us who have said no you know 2021 election determined so many things are so for us it is the main agenda that nobody we condemn those innocently arrested we condemn it uh that's uh, making sh i mean we also condemn the militarization the drones yeah by the way the mass graves are real very but you are killing of ask, people ask us we know where the mass graves are in the rains on on, on 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 stones and throwing them in the river nile because they must denounce no as a buganda thing you i'm telling you you, you know you think sometimes are you are we li st still living in the same Uganda? Because the ex it is too much. It's too too. I maybe, get actually. But the yeah. rigor. Yes, maybe please. if I can just help you there. Please do as I reorganize myself you know, because <laughs> the face the faces of the Olivia <laughs> Olivia's yeah. eh? here we were crying with them just on the twenty seventh of last month. It's still very fresh. Let me just the faces give you of my the machetes. Let me give you my experience when I was and uh, I will pick from there. Yes, when I was <laughs> the member the, the leader of the opposition and the woman member of parliament for Kasese district during the massacres of the people in the kingdom in the palace. Mm. We advocated for justice, we advocated for rule of law, and I believed that the, the judicial system of this country will work and, mm -hmm. and to handle the matter in an open way. What I didn't, what I didn't know mm. is that everybody believed that we needed to talk to him seven. Huh? Yes. So just like Abed Wanika did propose to yeah. the National Unity Platform, mm -hmm. many people proposed, we need swallow your pride for the sake of your people go and talk to the president i said well this is not a winning affair mm. it is not it is a matter of the people of kasesa and therefore all the leaders of kasesa must be involved we i led a team of all the members of parliament from kasesa the religious leaders were represented by the bishop Zerevende Jackson, the, the retired bishop of the mm -hmm. South Renzori Diocese, mm -hmm. the district chairman represented the local council, and we went to meet President mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That thing they have so, always flashed it, Winnie so, now is in bed with him seven. But what I was doing then, mm -hmm. I thought that possibly talking to him seven would bring some changes, is it and our people are set free. Mm. Seven, we, we, we talked as leaders from the region. Mm. And he said, we are going to release your people, mm. including the king. Mm. We shall make sure that, but, he said, but, we are going to do a screening. Mm -hmm. And ensure that those we think are hardline cores, mm. we are not going to release them. We said, for you first to do your screening. Mm. Release those you think are innocent. Because we had presented to him a picture that he himself saw and accepted. He said yes, he even said yes, 
I'm aware that those who arrested, arrested innocent citizens, and I want to see how we set them free. We said, okay, I can tell you up to today. The then commitments I... he made, he has never fulfilled Till them. Now. Yes. So I can even say, even if the National Unity Platform carried itself to Museven, Museven is a liar. Okay. Let me well, 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 uh, now Dr. begin. Dr. Dr. Lina, I think me, I'm afraid we, we just need no, to no, break no, no, a little bit. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me before you break. The party position is very clear. We are not even our spokesperson who is watching, we did hold a press conference. Our position is very clear. We are not going to be negotiating with somebody who clearly robbed our, 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 our victory because we are not going to be sanctifying you know, that robbery. One, two, it is beyond Noob and, and seven. It is... Uh, by the way, right now, everybody is not safe. <laughs> Doctor, so, let's, let's we just totally disqualify ourselves from and, that negotiation. So for me, because from that day, the, 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 the yes. president is there. From Thank that, you very much. From well, that let's, day, let's, let's, I yeah. seem to trust him. Let's yeah. just break off briefly, and then when we return, <laughs> we shall continue the discussion. <laughs> just from that very point. We'll be back. Yes! Good. <laughs> Bye. Uh, Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk. How are you beautiful Ugandans? It's your girl to the Welcome to the fancy floor. Who doesn't see my hair, guys? I am super glamorous. Remember, this is the only show where we're going to be talking about fashion. Please, where are your things? Ah. What has been confusing you about fashion? <laughs> Sorry, you said I should not smile. For all the information about fashion, maintenance of body shape. I can wear bling bling when I'm going out. So you can wear bling bling going out or any occasion. We shall be doing all this in the fancy floor. Remember, it airs every Thursday right from 8.30 Tonight, with your girl, Teddy Tango, it is the fancy floor. Hey, Ugandans. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Dewa Kiki, the Deputy Defense Spokesperson, and actually the Deputy Spokesperson for the Uganda People's Defense Forces. I was hosted on Alternative Dig Talk. I encourage all Ugandans that this is the way to go. Always watch participate, give your views, and ask questions on alternative DigiTalk. DigiTalk, the way to go. The Alternative DigiTalk. Real issues. Real talk. beating up from seven and now they are well back. well we are back and uh, thank you for keeping it uh, dig dog and uh, the discussion continues well before we went for the break we were talking about uh, the whether NUP the leading uh, opposition party should uh, discuss mm. negotiate uh, I don't know the, the right word to use negotiate discuss dialogue with Mr. M7 mm. to have the members incarcerated at least um, get released but uh, it's alleged that uh, at one point there was discussions of such and then uh, some people got released. And now why, is it, why are you insisting that this time you cannot go for such discussions? Because out there, those allegations are there. That NUP as a party, you had some discussions and then uh, some members of the party who were inside, they got released. I don't know how true that is. Well, um, you had or you were reliably informed. Uh, that's because why he has sent uh, me having, a having you here, he has said having you here, I said it is alleged. <laughs> so having you here on the show, you have to clear the air. You either tell us the word or First of all, it's the first time I'm hearing. Okay. Really, to be very honest. Mm. Yeah, so I do not want to talk from a position of uh, 
of uh, misinformation. I don't. Okay. Uh, we have our spokesperson and uh, who would actually be the best person to do that. Because if I knew this would come in, then I would have gotten the position. But to the best of my knowledge, I know. But being the they senior were, they the were part, released. They were there. The people I know who were released, I'm one of the sureties. We fulfilled the criteria of the sureties and release on bail. That for me, or that we were, there were talks, in my view, is propaganda. But I also stand to be cor corrected. Okay. Okay? In my view, it is real propaganda to, to try and, they have always tried to position us as people, you know, and serious or as people who are weak, as people who are by the way. But you know, to see the resilience of these guys coming out and they are still very strong and those who are held in, dif in, in the different uh, positions. So the, not only that propaganda, do you know the way the state is operating to ensure that our people remain, not even our people, Ugandans, scores of Ugandans continue to remain incarcerated uh, 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 among others is to say, you see, we have released those ones, they don't care about, they have even said we don't care anymore because, uh, you know, people are in parliament. That is not true. Noob has continued to be very concerned of all those who are arrested, who are killed, who are killed, who are missing. We have a whole team that is recording, you know, these statements and the atrocities. It is too much, we're even overwhelmed. By the way, it's no longer a Noob affair. Yeah. So what, steps are, you, a, a, what a steps are you undertaking currently? I wish you had a bit of, of, of patience because I was coming to it that we have a fully fledged human rights office, which is one, recording these atrocities, informing and engaging one, two, in parliament. The members of parliament have not kept quiet, including the leader of opposition. They are raising these issues on the floor of parliament. Okay? We are making sure we demand. Follow us on every time we are holding a press conference. It is centered and grounded about making sure and ensuring that we condemn these illegal arrests of innocent people, the trials, the atrocities that are committed. <coughs> then too, we are calling for their release. Among others, the parliament also took uh, a position last week. Yeah. Mm. What have we not? Uh, what are, what are we doing? I want to congratulate the leader of, of, yeah. of, of the option, he, right honorable Matthias. Parliamentary, they walked out. What are we doing, members of KCCA, you know, in so solidarity with those orcas who were arrested, breastfeeding and taken to Chitalia? They went and demonstrated. And many of them were opposition and of course, noob. They are arrested. What are we doing? We have challenged and applied for bail in whatever place, including the military court muscle. What are we doing? We have created a space. Uganda is bleeding, which is celebrated one year yesterday. We have put pressure. We have done research, even at the international levels. Read what have we done in terms of the pressure people have created online, offline, in parliament, wherever we have been to speak out and challenge. Read today's press release by the European Union. Yeah, I read it. You think that just came like that on a silver platter? I read it. Actually, so if you think it the came outcomes from a silver of, uh, platter, the read also the tweet release. from the Italian ambassador where he has been dining and all. But what I mean, the EU, the, I, I apologize, the EU head of the, the delegation at one point was tweeting, celebrating how he has been dining with this other one. With him. But today's tone changed. What are we doing? We are putting pressure in every possible way to ensure the atrocities stop, to ensure the stolen and robbed victory is vomited. We are doing that and we will not sleep. Well, thank you so much. Um, and you know you were talking about the role of women. Yes. Yeah in the fight for justice and good governance. Yeah. There she does it Indeed. to tell yes. you what the women <laughs> of this country are doing. Yeah. And I also want to remind you and possibly our viewers that if 
the women in APA did not address yes the land issue would not have given the visib would not have been given the visibility it was given yeah. if the women in the parliament that budget wouldn't have been raised. She talked about the women leaders who excelled in handling the COVID issues. All those are issues that portray the governance fights that the women are involved in. The women talked about the unfair treatment when they go to court, most especially when they are faced with gender-based violence. And a special court was provided for women that is hearing just the issues of gender based so that these women are not harassed as they are questioned in court of who did it, who touched you, where, who that did it, what. All these were yeah. meant to silence the women. Yeah. And eventually they would say there is no evidence in yeah. the case that is really very, very glaring. So women advocated. So they have advocated for justice, for good governance, for mm. the rule of law, mm. for fair <laughs> treatment and equality. Yeah. If it weren't for the women's advocacy, we wouldn't have seen many women put into positions of leadership, even actually at party level. Well, the women in this country have advocated for the recruitment and the positioning of women at critical positions of leadership, even at party level. You saw Kadaga putting it to the leadership of all political parties, that those of you who are going to appoint chairpersons and ministers, you must make sure that you do at least the balancing mm -hmm. of women in these critical roles. And, and really the women are working hard are. to see whether we can change the status quo, to see whether we can create a, a society that believes in the capabilities of each one of us. A society that treats women as equal as the other gender. And that is what many of the women out there are doing to make Uganda a better place for all of us to live. To well, live. well, thank you so much. Uh, I, I need to read through some of the comments that have been, uh, that are still As coming. As you are reading in. through, one of them also came and <laughs> said, please, we as noob cannot talk to us. Wow. <laughs> and that's why we're even not in iPod. Yes. Yeah, well, we cannot. Uh, well, um, this, one, this one is... Uh, so thank you so much. Susan. Shine Williams says, greetings to our great Joe Arisonyoni. Thank you, Honorable, for... Okay. Yeah for all you're doing for Ugandans. Then uh, this one, Namiremba uh, Anjira, thank you for watching. It's a right, I, I, I think, I don't think I'm getting these comments yeah, in the right order. No. Um, uh, there are so quite many, so. Uh, and then, as then this one, if a married man and father decides to expose his whole body to the public, it means that uh, the pain he went through was so unbearable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, do to bravely show the world what Ugandans go through under the dictatorship of Mr. Museveni. And by the Rise way, up Uganda, there are many Ugandans <clears throat> who are dying without speaking. Yeah. If you went to those torture chambers, those who have been there will tell you there are scores of Ugandans and non-Ugandans, human dignity has been put to shame. I think we have someone on the line. I can say... Call yeah. Hello. Hello. Yes, please. Your name and where you're calling from. Good evening, Mr. Abdullah Chief. Good evening. How are you? Your name and where you're calling from? Um, I'm Ismail Kasule from the only oil city in Uganda, that's Hoima. Yes. <laughs> and I'd like to thank you for hosting those powerful women today, tonight. Thank, thank you. I'm um, more especially the Honorable Winnie Kiza. Thank she you. has put a smile on Ugandans, more especially those from the oil city, when she appeared back after a very long <laughs> vacation that she has been <laughs> on. <laughs> because since she story. left parliament, many have been asking whether those powerful and tough, what do the dictator still, still stand? Wow. But um, she has given us it's hope. Done. But one thing I would like to tell her, it's that I think it's high time women take charge of this country. And we see hope in her. Yeah. And we believe that she can lead the liberation that this country needs. 
So please, as we talk about the role of women in leadership, the role of women in liberation, I think Uganda now we have the right person, and that's in the names of Winnie Kiza. I think it's yes. high time she, she <laughs> yes. considers thinking about that and leading the liberation of this country because Mr. Seven has done a lot of things. And we believe this uh, liberation is now led by a woman, and more so a woman who is tested, whom we've seen. Because I remember when the Honorable Winnie was appointed to be a leader of opposition in, in Parliament, I remember the Honorable Dongo so came up with very many insults, accusations that she's a junior, she will not see a Parliament very well, but her record has been there and unchallenged up to date. So I think she can steer this country and she can lead this liberation that Ugandans are yearning for, and I believe she can take this country forward. So thank you so much, and please, as she leaves the studios, she should think of leading this liberation that we are on, and this country and overthrowing the dictator. Thank you so much. Thank you. You are, you are speaking. Thank you so much, Ismaili Kasule from Hoyman. We thank you for oh, nice. always being part of our show. Uh, and for those who would want, our studio lines are right over there on your screen. But uh, if you can write it down, it's uh, 0789 MTN is 0789 Then uh, Airtel, you can call on 0759 And then... We, you, you also give us your views, your opinions, yeah. and then tell us what do you think must be done beyond the, the, the way it has been done. Well, this one is uh, uh, Ambassador Grace Sempala said uh, uh, that's the well, she, she was responding to the one who was referring to Kakwenza. So that is the problem an individual being in the government and the government being an individual. <laughs> so it's, that's why we keep on seeing such things happening. Then uh, Shine Williams saying greetings to our. Okay, no, 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 no. Then. Uh, Why no? <laughs> no. Then uh, this one says, uh, I really appreciate you, Mama Kasese, Honorable Winichis. I love the example you gave to other leaders. This is Semucho Papayanga as a bonafo signo biagwa. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Papayanga. Yes. Papayanga. <laughs> wow. Then uh, this one is Jackson Wabiona. He said, Winnie, you are a real representative of the party. You belong to the alliance. Then this one, Tumusime Kato says, already here to follow the show and discussion keenly. Thank you for watching. Then this one, Tito Watito. Good show. Uh, Chaguba, uh, my brother from the NRM. Thank you for watching the show. And, wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's so nice. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, uh, so many comments. Uh, mm. Uh, okay, hey. Then this one says, uh, uh, salute Dr. Nina Zadriga. Pile pressure you are talking about should be seen in the results and success. Should be making noise for, and not you to keep reminding us that you have inserted pressure. Uh, it seems you are letting us down as a country. This is Kobe Sinje, Hola Clarissa. It's like she wants to see, Clarissa wants to see more. More than saying we are mounting pressure, they want to see the pressure. Uh, maybe uh, uh, Clarissa, there was we saw a protest in Parliament just last week where members of Parliament walk out of the chambers. I think that's one of uh, the ways. But uh, uh, Dr. Lina will will elaborate more on uh, the other strategies they are using to mount pressure uh, to ensure that uh, the people in detention get uh, released. Then this one says. Uh, uh, ha, ha, ha. Uh, the others I'm trying to avoid. Uh, this one is asking, what is that TV station? This is the alternative <laughs> digital. <talk. It's laughs> what an interesting and educative debate. Thank you. Uh, this one says she's too quite this. Mention no, it. I'm, I, I'm not getting it. Okay. She's okay. too quiet these days, though. Please speak. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Wind, for walking the talk. That's uh, Ambassador. Then uh, I know her personally from those days in Makere. She's a brilliant and vibrant woman. I don't know whom she was referring, but definitely Both you're all. Both of us are fruits of Makere. Yes, yeah. so <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but yeah. I give it to you. I give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, 
you see, just with this uh, conversation of uh, the people being incarcerated, uh, it takes me back just uh, this very week. No, 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 last week. We celebrated the Tarehe Sita. Tarehe Sita... Uh, Who is it, we? It's uh, as a country, because it's a, it's a national... We, we have no choice. Whether you subscribe to it or not, it's, it's on the national calendar. The Tarehe Sita was celebrated. But uh, Tarehe Sita, these are the soldiers, these are the people who are... Always, many reports, they always indicate that uh, the army, you know, they are at, at, they, they're always on among the top people violating human rights. They're the ones torturing Ugandans. And Now, as women advocating to see that things really change in this country, do you see any relevance? Do we still need to go ahead and celebrate this Tarehe Sita when the country is bleeding just like the comments are coming? I want to start with the Honorable, mm -hmm. the, the right Honorable Winchita. I just need to be corrected, but what I know about Tarehe Sita is the day that some some few Ugandans mm. decided to take up arms and fight the government then. Mm. Isn't it so? Yes. It was 6th Feb, I think. Six, it was 6th Feb. Yeah. They decided and said enough is enough. Tarehe, tarehe, tarehe Sita, Sita. The 6th day. The, so so here, he we as a country, we are commemorating rebellion. Okay. Commemorating mm -hmm. rebellion. Mm -hmm. When people said enough is enough. Is enough, let's take up arms and the rest Vija Kweso Tinga. Why did they go to the bush? Why did they declare war? Or why did they declare rebellion against the government then? Rigging of elections. Kidnaps, detentions without trial, detentions of political opponents, extrajudicial killings, poverty, and all these ills that they thought were the ills then. Mm. Mm. If Ugandans <laughs> are true and sincere to themselves, is any Uganda ready to celebrate? the eradication of all those that I have mentioned. When we have people incarcerated without trial, mm -hmm. we have people missing from their homes for having been abducted and possibly found murdered. We are still alive to what happened in 2021 and even beyond of the rigging of elections the recent election that was in Kayunga where the victory was just grabbed from the winner We have people who are being tortured. We are just talking about Kakuenza who undressed himself to show, look what was done to me. Masereka who said, look what was done to me. Many of the Muslim clerics who have been tortured, who have been incarcerated, who have, who have faced a lot of injustice in their own country. And we say we need to celebrate. So those who went to the bush, you really went there in vain. Yeah. So to me as a Ugandan and as a woman leader, a mother, a wife, and a daughter, I feel the blood that was shed for the liberation of this country was shed in vain. And those who died must be turning their backs wherever they are. The people who died for Uganda to get the freedom that we thought Ugandans would get, must be saying we died for nothing. Wow. So there is no reason why really I should sit to say I'm celebrating Tarehe Sita because there is nothing to celebrate. If anything, possibly we are just saying, oh, why did we, it was, I, I go back to the betrayal in the city and I yeah. say it was better while we waited. Yeah. Because we have killed our past, we are busy killing the present and I see no future. Unless, if, Uganda, if Ugandans, all of us speak in unison and say enough is enough. 
And we don't only look at Winnie, we don't only look at Zedriga, we don't only look at a handful of Ugandans and we say we are going to put them at the forefront. Usually that is why a few of those people are targeted by the state. Yeah. If we all come out and say enough is enough, we all condemn, including those who are surviving because of the atrocities that are being committed on their neighbors. If you also raise up and say enough is enough, because I know wherever you are, even those of you who think have accumulated wealth out of mm. the system, you are not sleeping happily. You have erected walls around your homes because you fear some people will come for you. The ones who will come for you are the products of the poverty that has been created by this regime. And you are fearing you are not sleeping because they are also not sleeping. Yeah. So it is the responsibility of all of us Ugandans to raise up to the occasion and challenge the status quo. Thank and you therefore, so much. there is no reason me as a mother, as a wife, as a daughter, to say, as a woman, I should celebrate the race Thank you. Fact, I, I speaking, want to hear from, from... Yeah, speaking from you, I reflected on that celebration of Tare Sita. We didn't celebrate it. We, the Ugandans who are bleeding yeah. from all the evil things, from the stolen election, the zombie elections, to the disappearances of our people, to now even, you know, the, all the bad things, to the blatant sale of human beings yeah. in, in the Middle East, mm. to all the systems collapsed, to our young babies of 12 and 10 they getting pregnant, pregnant and some by their father, that total moral decay. There was nothing to celebrate. But we reflected. Yes. What is it uh, we Good can evening do? to you, okay. uh, Mr. Tifan. Please, please, let me, let me, let me at least do it as well. just... And thank you so for what, the show. What, what happens Hello? is we have an online platform. It's, it is a, Hello? A hosted under the Uganda hashtag Uganda is bleeding. Hello? And we reflected uh, uh, on uh, the lives uh, that now Hello? are... I think maybe let me let me just guide this. Uh, uh, just in the next uh, yeah, yeah. five minutes, we will be opening up our calls for all those who want to to be part of the discussion. But let us take the, the caller who is online, and then we it's keep it for five minutes, and then. No, 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 it's not fair. It's not fair. I think it's even not, the caller we have lost the caller. It's not fair. We have lost the caller. Yeah, it's mm. not. Okay. Yeah. We've lost the caller, so we can. So now even my trend of thinking. <laughs> so I mean. What was there to celebrate? Mm. The cost of living is just, a, it's, 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 a, it's, I don't know, inhuman, degrading, in, it, it is, everything has actually collapsed. So what are we celebrating? Hmm? With our people who are even held in incarceration still being tortured, what are we celebrating here? So we decided to co commemorate uh, and, and also console and we, we console one another. Uh, a, a very nice thing they did is develop an app, app, app uh, for tracking these girls and boys who are going to the Middle East, done by a very brilliant young man and also the team. So we were tracking some lady who had been... The, 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 the stories from them are just too horrific. So for yeah. me, there was nothing to celebrate. One, two institutions go to the health center go to the schools go to just make a reference to anything there is actually nothing to celebrate those who are celebrating i think would be if, if they didn't go to school they would be real wizards because they're dancing on the graves of of, of ugandans they are so uh, we now need to take it upon ourselves that we don't lament that uganda is our country that we all have a role to play in reclaiming the sanctity of Uganda. Do not wait for Joel Sonyoni. Do not wait for Winnie. Do not for wait for Dr. Zedriga. Yes, you have rightfully said, oh, you, we, we, we need something concrete. I also need something concrete from you because <laughs> one of the things, yeah, for us, you can take a river to the, I mean, go to the river, but you let it drink. 
or you take somebody to <laughs> the, the river, but you have, this person has to fish. So all of us, it is incumbent on us that we liberate Uganda. Well, that thank you so we much. we recreate a new Uganda. That we change the narrative of these gross, inhuman, degrading situations. That we change the narrative of normalizing corruption, of normalizing impunity. It is all on us together. And I know I call upon the women of Uganda. We can do it. In Juba, the Juba peace process, when women were being mutilated, our breasts were being cut, women of Uganda came together. We delivered the peace caravan. You yeah, were there in, was Juba. there in Juba. The two men had to come and lead the, the teams to talk. I remember with those of Rosalba Oyua, we demonstrated with our skirts and we ran around in it. You know, we caused the men to come in solidarity with the children to stay overnight in those, the bus park, and the, including the, our archbishop. Women of Uganda, let's think outside the box. Let's think how we can reclaim our sanctity and reclaim our victory. Well, thank you so much. Uh, I think now I should. Uh, we have a uh, yes. technical issue when our calls come. They, they're always automatic. They just ah, get connected instantly. Yes. Okay. That's why when we're getting the echoes and even our viewers... A bit they could, disruptive. Yes, and our viewers could not listen to any of us. Well, I, I think I should now open the lines. Uh, if you're using MTN, call us on 0789-017-145. Or for those using Airtel, you can call us on uh, 0759-132-310. or 0759-1323-10. Uh, and then... Uh, you tell us when you call, tell us where you're calling from, and of course, don't forget your name. Thank Someone you. on the line. Hello. Thank you, Mr. Tiff and the guest you have tonight. Thank you. Now, this is Bob from Barara. Bob from Barara. And yes. uh, for, the, uh, for the discussion. So, But you see, I have a disagreement with uh, Dr. Rina Zetriga at one point. Because if you are telling the people that you are inserting pressure on a regime, and this is a military regime, the same pressure me. should have results that, is, that are actually visible by every person. Now moving out of parliament, is that something new that they have done as the national unity platform for the first so time? These things what? have been done by the opposition member of parliament for so many years, yeah. and it is not surprising that the same will actually bring the same results as nothing will change. Then on, on, on the issue of Honorable Winikiza, much as yeah, she served well this nation as the leader of opposition, but there are things we hoped that she would have tackled first. For example, some article in the Constitution, uh, record of the MP from Parliament, Article 82 of the Constitution, talks about that the right to recall a member of parliament was only applicable in the time when in the movement system. We have moved for so many years in the movement system and now we are in politics. Still, what are they doing now as the party? On the party level, uh, on the two guests, the National Unity Platform and the Alliance of the National Whom did you want to recall? So to whom did you want to be recalled? Uh, I have so many that are actually but thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you, Bob, and thank, uh, you, thank Bob. you for being part of the show. Yes, uh, the lines are right there on the screen: zero seven eight nine zero one seven one four five or zero seven five nine one three two three ten, and then you be part of our discussion. I don't know if we could take uh, calls at once. And then uh, mm -hmm. we we'll respond, respond to one at a time. Yeah. When it comes, we can. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, the, the first question that went to uh, Dr. Lina: mm. uh, Do you think moving out of Parliament is that enough? We now, <laughs> should we now expect our people to be released <laughs> because you walked out of Parliament? <laughs> by the way, uh, releasing the people. The, thank you so much, Bob. By the way, for that uh, very. Provoking question. <laughs> provoking, provoking. Because it's making me think outside the box. 
So, um, yes, call her, call her. someone on the line. Yes, We've lost them. So, Bob, thank you so much because you have actually expanded our thinking beyond uh, that. The workout. For me, my, 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 my take to you is that, and, and other Ugandans is that not, without making it a bilateral, the pressure that is being put in different ways also have to be very strategic. You know why? Because we're dealing with the military. Walking out of parliament has even a more effect because it's going to, it has already started paralyzing business, let me tell you. We have seen from that day on Thursday, there is a, an outreach to the opposition, please come back so that we can, yes, I must tell you, when these parliamentarians who have walked out of parliament, <coughs> by the time the two weeks is finished, something great is going to happen up. Because the, 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 the NRM uh, in the parliament is actually uh, uh, going to swallow their pride. Let me tell you. <laughs> it is making, yeah, it's definitely, you know you've been in opposition. When you are supposed to be holding a conversation and you are alone, you know what that, what that, that the implication, even in terms of rule of law. So, yes, it is the first time they have worked out in big numbers. And they, it's not the first time they, 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 they have worked out. Yes, in parliament. And they are already, the impact is already being felt. It is being felt because it's bringing business to a standstill. <coughs> Do I think it will? No, it may not be the only one. Please, if you watched today's uh, press conference, there are other things coming up. Watch tomorrow <laughs> and please be interested in following. There are series of other actions going to take place. Well, so thank let you so me much. assure you. Thank you so much, Dr. Rina. Uh, uh, right, Honorable, there is a question that was addressed to you. Uh, the right, I think, was referring to the right to recall a member of parliament. Yeah. Or something you maybe it was business and, 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 I, and I think uh, the right to recall a member of parliament was catered for in the constitution before we went into the multi party dispensation. And I think the, 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 the idea behind it was that if a member goes to parliament on the ticket of a political party, yeah. Of course, every political party will want to be the one to put in a member of parliament. After being elected as a member of parliament, you become a leader for even those who did not national vote for leader. you. You become a national leader. Mm. And as a national leader, even these who are on the other side, you lead them. Yeah. But now, if we would give chance to anybody to just say we are recalling a member of parliament, those opposed to that particular person in mm. the other political party mm. would initiate the process. Yeah. And so I think this was trying to treat that. <laughs> By the way, if we left it open, I can tell you that we wouldn't have any member of the opposition now in parliament. <laughs> because crafty as they are, members of the ruling party would have ensured that every member of the opposition is thrown out, is thrown out under that recall order. So. The, the thing we can begin debating now, and, and I don't regret mm. not having participated in that debate of a recalling of a member of yes, parliament. Well, uh, I, don't, I don't regret, but I want to thank Bob for saying I think this is an issue. There are people mm. who are not behaving the way we mm. expect our yeah. honorables to behave. Mm. There are people who are not doing what we thought they mm. should be doing as members of parliament. Yes, we still have a window of opportunity. Thank Five so years much. is not a long period. It's not. Five years is just a if very there, short time. Just there. wait for them to come. Mm. And they recall them. Mm. And you recall them using <laughs> your vote. Well, thank you so much. I, I think I suggest we take all the callers at once because it's kind of interrupting when uh, you're trying to make a point and then someone, you know, okay, a caller comes in. Yeah, so let's right. give like five what minutes works. to the callers. Yeah, you right. just raise your questions and then it's after okay. that we'll not take any other call. Yes, uh, the, our lines are open and uh, the numbers are right on the screen. Uh, 0789-017145 if you're using MTN. And those uh, using Airtel, please call us on 0759-132310.
we should we're giving it five minutes to receive the calls and then after that <laughs> we'll have to really proceed with the discussion because it's kind of interrupting when uh, these are prominent people these are very strong men so when they are, uh, we, we may know, we don't know when we will be able to have them here again so when they're trying to make a point i think it's important that we listen to them well caller tell me your name and where you're calling from someone on the line hello hello I think we've lost that one. Uh, sorry. Really? Yes, because the, the echo you is too much. I don't know. I think that maybe the technical team is trying to do something to put it in right order. Yes, but uh, just call our lines and then we would love to hear from you and then uh, we proceed with our discussion. Uh, but uh, the whole issue is rotating around how the role of women in uh, the fight for good governance how we can see you know that uganda is changing for better you see much as we sometimes we talk about uh, a change of leadership change of leadership but we must also ensure that uh, we have a uh, functional systems that can really pull that can really check the, the kind of leaders we get into positions we we if we don't put this into consideration you may find that uh, uh, the presidents that come in or the leaders that come in after Museven, they may actually be worse than Mr. Mm. Museven. I want to give an example. You, you remember what happened in the U.S. Uh, Trump was trying to, you know, uh, he wasn't really willing to, to, give, or to, to give out power. So imagine if, if Trump was a president in Uganda, he would actually be no different with Mr. Museven. The only difference is that those people, they are, their systems, they check them. The systems put you know. them in order. We, had, we have never seen any peaceful transfer of power since independence no. here. Yeah. Yeah. And because of that, we haven't been able to build the systems that can check our leaders like it is in the U.S. and other developed democracies. Yeah. So to us, we believe <coughs> that we should begin the conversation yeah. of seeing a leader leave a stage even when they want them. That's what... That is what Obama said, that the law is law. Yeah. I know the Americans still wanted me, but, but because I have to leave, beautiful, beautiful. I must leave. Yeah. That I know even if I came here and presented myself for an election, the great people of America would have given but, me the vote. Yeah. But because law is law, you know, for them, they still believe that the law of the land is supreme. Yeah. What do you say to a person who will ask you, you know, you, know, you say we, when we change leaders, Museveni changes the constitution in his favor. He said, yes, okay, let's, let, let me go back and we scrap the term limits yes. because he must come back. Mm. When it came to age, he says, let me scrap the age limit because I must come back. Mm. We have a system, we had a system that was going to check that. One was the system of the age, of the term limits. Yeah. That if we have a mad leader, yes, we have the window of the, the five years. After the five years, we can throw him out or her. But if the leader manipulates himself or herself into office again for the next five years, we would tolerate these leaders for just 10 years and we know it's done. Then another leader comes on board. And if the, age, the, the term limit would not hold them back, then the age limit would still sort them. Yeah. These were safety valves, safety nets that we are put in our constitution to answer the question that you are talking about. For heaven's sake, Uganda is not sort of leaders. You mm -hmm. have just had Ismail Kasule saying, hey, hey, Winnie, please, <laughs> can you pick up the courage and come and contest? Meaning that there are many leaders that people look on to in this country. All we require is can we build the systems? systems yeah. Can we build our institutions and make them functional? That when we have a parliament, it is a real parliament that is yeah. not just a rubber stamp. Yeah. When we have a judiciary, it is a judiciary that is not a rubber stamp. When we have an executive, it is an executive that knows its functions and duties and that we have a citizenry that knows its roles and responsibilities and obligations when it comes to putting leaders in office. And yeah. unless we begin doing that, and we have this fear that has been put into us by the regime, to know that changes may never bring us anything good, we shall be held hostage 
by those who want to continue staying in power forever and ever. Amen. It can happen and I know we can get good leaders who can lead this country to where we want it to go. If they will not come, then you will have them seven years of the kinds of them seven years to continue manipulating us and staying here. So Ugandans have no fear. Move out of that fear and know that your vote counts. And know that the decision you make in a minute can change your life and possibly change the future of this country. Well, thank you so much. I want to go to Dr. Uh, Lina Zebre, but before, I, I think I need to read this. This one, Namine Angela, says, uh, betrayers, greedy people, and double dealers have killed the struggle. Mm -hmm. And then she says, please talk about the violence against young women in political parties. Mm -hmm. We very well know how many women end up disappointed and forgetting the struggle. Yeah. Well, uh, now, the I issue I want to talk about is uh, opposition unity. We all know that, uh, we know that by virtue of our, our laws, we expect many political actors and, and the, the political space is big enough to accommodate everyone. Yeah. But at times there are those situations where working together is necessary, especially during election times. Because for 36 years, Ugandans, you've made the attempts to, over, to, 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 to peacefully you know, have a transfer of power from the current regime to another regime. And this has failed to happen. And one would think that maybe if the opposition, the political actors, you could join hands and work together. Instead of fronting 14 presidential candidates, this would make some sense. What is your take, Dr. Zebrig, on this? Thank you so much. Um, the will, the wish of the people is that there would be only one presidential candidate in the opposition and so on. As a scholar in conflict, if all the time we are agreeing, whether leave politics aside, because human beings and conflict is actually part of human life. To differ is very normal. Even twins are not supposed to agree, okay? The because they are different. If I'm always agreeing, when Win is always agreeing with me, then there is something wrong with me or her or both of us. We must, it's human. It's actually, it's, it, 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 it is the human reality to defer to, to. That aside, from the time of independence up to today, there are certain values people and citizens and voters and leaders believe in and subscribe in. There have been so many attempts, very many, and coming together must never be a coercion. Yeah. Coming together must be willingly done. Coming together will be like delivering, you know? And when the time comes that it should be people, I mean, the leaders should come together, they will. Okay? In fact, some of the divisions is being it's perceptional. Because these guys talk among themselves. They do. We also do. We you know? Talk. You we know, talk. we talk. We strategize. The other time we were for a press conference together. But it is being portrayed as if, we, you know, the opposition is totally in this array and so these people and us were holding conversations, conferring with one another, okay? So, <coughs> there will be a time, and it is coming, when the conversations and the principles do match the aspirations of the people of Uganda and what the political parties stand for. Because political parties are grounded on certain principles yeah, and values mm, and values mm. and values so why should i go and and so it, it will be a conversation and a construction like the whole issue of women and perception mm. so we will need to construct it we will need also to decose we need to build the bridges will they do it yes one time because when the people of uganda will come and say, Winnie, unless you and Lina, this is, for example, he was saying Winnie should run. Yeah. And then many more people will come and say, we will run for, you know, and support Winnie. Uh, uh, so Lee. in my view, mm. may I, why are you so much on a hurry with me? 
<laughs> I feel when I'm building, uh, my argument is when you deliberately come in and wouldn't want me. Why? Please proceed. And my apology. Proceed. Because it has happened throughout this conversation. Please yeah, proceed. you've done it. This is the fourth time. Viewers, we apologize, but I felt it was time it's really to bring it. Yeah, it is a very great Please incident, proceed. But thank you very much. I've taken note of it. Thank you. Uh, 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 well, uh, the, the question I wanted to, it was just on that same point. I wanted to get it, some clarification from you. The, uh, when, whenever elections are taking place, we have seen many politicians trying to, to give false hopes to Ugandans, especially right from even the previous times before NUP came into existence. People could say, Agenda, and all these slogans and what, they did not yield results. Then in the year 2021, that is when we saw you know, such things, and one would think that we even disfranchised people from, uh, uh, from their roles, you know? You just leave it to me. And all these things have not, you know, again, removing a dictator. When are we removing a dictator? Thank you so Mission much. Mission 2021, what thank happened? You, thank you so much, with due respect, we actually removed that dictator on the 14th of January. We did. The people of Uganda voted. Enormously, we did. And if you may not know, people power. No is in the power. That's why I can walk in the streets of Kampala. Nothing will happen to me. I can walk in Arua now because that is the power of people power. Okay? That is why in a, 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 a party, in a Thanksgiving party, somewhere in Arua, the one who was forced, our member of there's a member of parliament in one of the constituencies in Arua, for security reasons, for the other person, I will not, I would like to build on that. There was a, a, a function, and the two people came there, one whose victory was robbed, and the one who was forced, forcefully announced. So, the one with the Chizendalo hmm, announced and said, please, our member of parliament, this one stood up, said, you were appointed by M7 as, as a member of parliament. As, as an Arajis. <laughs> <laughs> it did. These are not lies. Our member of parliament we elected was not announced is that one. That is the power of people. And this guy was so embarrassed. That is the power of people where they are going to tell you that we, we, need, we did not vote you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it is going to happen. People are going to break all the fears. And it is happening. Okay. And it has already started to happen. And that's why people are so bold. That's why people are so resilient. That is why they are making sure that the victories in the that's when they even say, we never voted him. You understand? So it's already happening, the power of the people. That's why the border borders have also been targeted. Okay? And it, things are happening in such a way that each person affected, each group affected, is now organizing to act. It is beyond us. So Entebbe Muentebe is beyond. What our leaders did as inspirational as he is, was to demystify that fear and to, uh, to, to make sure that people, the citizens, felt very powerful. And it was throughout, it shook Uganda. It gave us hope. That is what is happening. Now, Doctor, th there was uh, every after elections, still, yeah. uh, right from the previous elections. Yeah. Because there the, are like three times where we have had elections and it's alleged the elections have been rigged. Uh, and one said uh, we are, there was a, a defiance strategy at one time which aimed at uh, re reclaiming the victory. And then even after the 2021, we had the same, we want to need to reclaim. What, you shall cry for all of this until when? As the opposition, as people who go into the elections, children, people, people, people get killed, and then after the end, you just look on, results get rigged as you are. Watch your tongue. We just don't look on. You're a moderator. 
Watch your tongue. When people have died, when the leaners have even been in prison. And that is the same point. Okay, I'm about. so when we say you just look on, I believe, I believe that's not fair to Ugandans and also to, to, to some of us who have. So we do not look on. I don't know what else you would have expected me or the, the Ugandans to do, but in my view, the documentation, the solidarity, the workout, the inspiration, the defiance, the demonstrations. Do you know there are demonstrations every day? There are demonstrations there. The, the diaspora has gone ra on rampant with demonstrations. The education. In fact, this week we have had the sixth module of civic education. Educate, empower, and inspire. We are doing all those things. We are doing what we can. Do and it is taking short. Doctor, shape. let me just give this brief background. Yeah. In 1980, when uh, we had elections in, the, in this country, yes. Mr. Museven contested as a candidate of UPM. And uh, he was standing in Imbarara North against uh, Sam Kutesa. And uh, when Mr. Museven alleged that his victory, actually when he alleged that there was vote rigging, his only candidate who won on the, on the uh, UPM. UPM ticket, mm. Honorable Christmas Chiyunga, he actually boycotted. I actually voted. 1980, yes, I was already an so, so when I say that uh, you always go for elections, our people die, People get rot in jail, but we always say we are reclaiming our victory, we are reclaiming our victory. And Uganda need to see something beyond those, those narratives we are reclaiming our... They don't need to see, they need to participate in creating that there is something happening beyond. Because you know, those victory. are two different things. It's their Why are you as well? Exactly, it's their victory as well. It's not my victory, it's not our victory. It so, is our victory. Exactly. Uh, the right so, honorable went to parliament. <laughs> Yeah. as a member of parliament on the allegation that they were rigged. Maybe we would have not seen in parliament. And the same, like as a leader of opposition, we would not, we would not see maybe the NUP leadership the, trying to put a situation that indeed their victory was rigged and they are, they are not the opposition. You know, let me tell you this. Indeed, there is a lot of work that is being done. And there is a lot of work that has been done. You may think a walkout is just a mere issue. Uh -huh. But the fact that you are debating it now, it means it is becoming an issue. Uh, yes. If it wasn't an issue, we wouldn't even be discussing it now. If a walkout was not an issue, the government chief whip wouldn't have said we are going to look into the issues that have made the members of parliament walk out. When we walked out in parliament during the time of the Toji Quarter Yes. People thought it was just a mayor walkout. Uh -huh. Before they knew it, the whole country was involved into the issues of the Toji Quarter Until when Museven had to literally come to parliament through his SFC to beat up members of parliament. Others are still nursing the bruises. Yeah. Yeah. Ugandans are still nursing <laughs> yes. the bruises. It yes. ceased to be a matter of the small group that was in parliament. It became a matter of the whole country. Yeah. What we are requesting of the Ugandans is not to think that the few members of parliament uh -huh. who are in parliament are the only ones who are going to Kwete Kaderubengo. <laughs> it is incumbent upon all of us, the Ugandans, to know that our victory was rigged, we have heard that and, so many times. And, and that is why, by the way, when Museven went to the bush in 1980, mm. Ugandans supported him yeah. because they thought he was fighting a just cause. They knew that, yes, they were vote rigging and therefore we must support him. They all supported him. They gave him the food. They gave him the, the platform in the Renzori's. And we also boycotted the parliament. We are, he had only one Yes, member. he boycotted. He had only one yes, member. Yes, because so even, if, in parliament. even if really the member would have stayed in parliament, <laughs> there isn't much he would have done. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you know that is where we go wrong when people say, "But you people, some of you were in parliament. Why do you say that the election was rigged? The fact that two or three members have gone through does not sanitize the process." I'm afraid and, and, we and, and when Museven said the election was rigged, he was talking about the national election where he was not a candidate. Mm -hmm. 
You get it? Yes. He was not a presidential candidate. And there were no his, presidential candidates by then. And, but even if they were there, how many of his members went through for him to qualify yeah. that the members were rigged? It was only one. Even himself, the current leader, Kutesa floored him. So he wouldn't, if we were going by your narratives, he wouldn't have even had the audacity to say that elections were rigged because he had only one member. So what started as just a one member, it is now the issue that is driving us. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, so as you we give up benefit of doubt <laughs> yes. to these small numbers and don't underrate no. well, the well. beginning of, uh, of, of, of a seed. We, we know for sure that we are discussing now the yes. issue of the walkout. Yes. Even if people will say, does it make any difference? It we does. Are, we are contributing a block to an addressing. Mm -hmm. And it is test. also our party position, a peaceful means of change. Of change. It's, we are being principled. We are not going to be pushed. You know, Uga saying, oh, we are going No. Ugandans, party... Ugandans want to hear, I think, the hard <laughs> stuff of saying, the, oh, we are taking all our numbers. <laughs> and we are taking on the state. Well, well, but we, they we, want to push yeah, us into that we are not so <laughs> that M7 can say we are now yeah. fighting rebels. Yeah. No, no, no. I, I think we, we shall we, use we, every available. We, we only have three minutes. We, we, we only have three minutes to, to And we are very And Dr. 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 Zadriga, <laughs> in the last three minutes we have, I'm just giving you one minute. I want you to comment. The, uh, uh, the, the uh, People's Front for Transition, PFT, they, they, they try to engage different political parties and actually different actors to be <coughs> part of that front and maybe to, to mount more pressure to pushing the dictator. And uh, that is an offer that the NUP that seem, seems not to have fully embraced it. What is your take on that? Do you think there is need to... I don't know me and you whether we're in the same shop. Ours is a matter of principle of the party. Okay? It is okay. We, these are also people and entities with whom we are on the same side. Yeah. We are all struggling. Okay? We are all struggling. We are, there's an elephant. We are holding the trunk. It is coming down. They are holding the tail. It is coming down. What is wrong with it? What is wrong with it? Eventually, we just want this elephant down, isn't it? What more analogy do I need to give you? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the same goes to the same goes to the right one. Yes. Monitor. From uh, the ANT, yes. we have also. I don't know. Maybe you have made a club and no, there, is, there, is, there, is, there is no no difference whatsoever no. from what the honourable Zedriga is saying. Yes. It's actually, that there is nobody who should say, "Come and we all hold uh -huh. the, the neck." First, leave the tail. First, leave the tail. Oh, the trunk. We, the trunk, and we all hold no. the neck. Supposing it just hits you with its horns, <laughs> let each one of us push from whichever ah, corner until we squeeze it out. Out. Oh, and, I, and, I, and I want to say that to us in the Alliance for National Transformation, mm. we just said the same. Yeah. We are doing the same, mm. fighting the dictator. Yes. As for now, mm. push from wherever you, you are. Yes. We push from wherever we are until don't we call on me to until, re now yes, release don't, the drug. Don't call on me to, to release the where I'm going. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. But I, I, I know that for sure, getting back to the debate of uh, the, the women's women. role yeah. yes. in leadership, women have inserted pressure. Yeah. Women have put all their energies. Women have brought their building stones mm -hmm. and building blocks to shaping the narratives and shaping the agenda of leadership in this country. And we believe that by doing that, we shall be part of those who will cause the necessary changes that Ugandans want. The women of Uganda, the women of Africa, the women of the world are all united to ensure that changes happen for the good of humanity, for the respect of women and the dignity of all of us as a human race. I and I therefore want to say to those of you who are viewing the Dig Talk show, continue viewing Thank you. and continue shaping the narratives that will see Uganda getting to where we want it to go. All of us, let's rise up to the occasion and know that we have a role to play in creating the change that we deserve. Thank you so we much. We have a role to play 
in making Uganda a better place for all of us to stay in. And I want to bring you greetings from the, the Alliance for National Transformation. I thank you. And thank you so I much. I also uh, want to Dr. conclude yes. with the greetings from my president, with the greetings from the Women's Wing lead, with the greetings from the entire, the young, vibrant party. Wow. That is creating, and our slogan, we are living it, a new Uganda. A Ooh. new Uganda, where and we are able and, to... And actually, ours is yes. the people first, and yes. the future. Yeah. Because the future that we are looking at so. is one that puts people at the yeah. center so. stage of changing their lives. And the no. issue is that... Uh, uh, Honorable, yes. you, you had decided actually yes. the last one. So, so, <laughs> so I, I just want Ugandans to know that we are working, going towards... Please, Dr. Zedriga, conclude. Of goodwill. Thank you so much. I like it when we inspire one another. <laughs> I really love it. I and really, really, really love it. Yeah, and we borrow minutes. So, a new Uganda, people power, our power, people first. and you. A new future. Our power, <laughs> a new Uganda. Please, we can create it. We are going to create it. We've been in, we need to just come together, demystify fear. Yeah. Demystify fear. It is doable. Because the women of Liberia did it in 2003. And it is documented in the documentary, Pray the Devil Back to, back to Hell. Let us pray this devil back to hell. Two, the women of Uganda did it. 2006, and we marched together demanding that women need peace and peace needs women. This time, women need justice, women need democracy, ne women need the right president in the office. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Zedriga. Thank you so much, the right honorable uh, Winnie Chisa. Actually, when I was reading your profile, I, I, I realized that uh, you, one of the people who inspire you is uh, Ellen Johnson Salif Salia. Of, from uh, Liberia. Yeah. Well, and uh, finally, you had to mention that, so yeah. I didn't get it wrong. Yeah. Well, I, it's really a pleasure that we have been, you've been part of this, this discussion. Yeah. I really thank you for creating time Maybe to be moderator. part of We us. have been unfair to all those who made comments. Yeah, yeah. sure. We want to thank all all of you yeah. citizens yeah. You. the viewers from wherever you are thank you for being part of the show thank you for taking up your time taking and off data. time and even Actually, the data we know that it's expensive but you have you are also for laying a foundation hours. stone to the uganda that we all want as we create a, a uganda that will cater for all in all ways of life. We want to thank you for being part of the show. Thank you. I want to thank the team I have worked with, JJ, Anita, uh, Tenjo, Jeremiah, Arnold. Thank you so much for being behind this to ensure that everything is on as uh, planned. My name is Abdel Latif. Until next week on Monday again, on 14th. But before I wind up, I want to remind all our viewers that uh, we are offering a Valentine's hamper. Just record a video of yourself telling us who is your valentine. It could be your mother, it could be your girlfriend, it could be your wife, it could be your husband, it could be a friend. And why do you think that is your valentine for this year? And then the best video will win a hamper from the Alternative Dick Talk. My name is Abdel Latif and have a good night. Alternative Dig Talk. Real issues. Real talk.